Cockney gangster and gambler Jake Green is freed from jail in an undisclosed city following a seven-year sentence of solitary incarceration for an undisclosed offense. As a result, Jake got claustrophobia, which makes him hate riding in elevators and leads him to get extremely nervous in confined settings. Two years later, Billy and Jake visit a casino run by Dorothy Macha, a gang leader who engages in illicit gaming throughout the city. Green was sent in prison since Macha had given him the command to perform the crime. The brothers have come to retrieve the sum that Green feels the mobster owes them, despite Billy's reluctance. Without delay, Macho summons them to a special section of his casino that is host to a high rollers game. Jake loses a huge wager he made on a chip toss with a person at the table. He places the same wager with Macha, tricking him into thinking he is safe and he wins this time. Macha, humiliated, gives his right-hand guy Paul the order to kill Jake. A stranger gives Jake a card and says he can help him as he and his brothers are leaving the casino. Jake had to use the stairs because of his fear. Jake glances at the card in the stairwell before collapsing and going down the steps. The words, take the elevator, are displayed on the card. Someone races Jake to the hospital the doctors tell him they will have the results in a few days, but they don't know why he fainted. Later, Jake returns home unaccompanied by Billy to find Sorter, Macha's assassin, waiting for him. There's another note with the words, pick this up on his porch. Bullets fly past Jake's back as he bends to get the card. Jake is the only one who survives the hit, and he is rescued by Zack, the mysterious lone shark, who shows up while the gunfire rages on. Jake is introduced to his partner Avi by Zack. They make him an offer. In exchange for taking all of his money, he will follow their instructions without question. They will defend Jake from Macha in return. They display Jake his medical file, which they have unexplainably acquired during their proposal. It suggests that the unusual blood illness that caused the blackout will kill him in three days. Jake walks away after realizing he is being duped. He receives the same prognosis and is told he has three days to live when he sees his doctor later. Jake accepts their requirements and comes back to Avi and Zach's pool hall with a bag of cash. The enigmatic guys ask Jake about his jail sentence after disclosing that his money will be used to finance their money lending business. According to Jake, he was offered the option of doing seven years in solitary confinement or 14 years in the regular prison population. He chooses to serve seven years in the latter. Jake discovers the formula, a particular tactic that is meant to enable its user to win every game during his time in isolation. Two anonymous males who lived in cells next to each other on either side of Jake's found the formula itself. They are called a Kongai and a master at chess. For the first five of his seven-year term, the three men use messages concealed inside library books, such as the mathematics of quantum mechanics, to exchange ideas about chess tactics and confidence techniques. Both the con artist and the chess specialist intend to escape their cells at the same time, promising to bring Jake along. However, they leave Jake behind to spend the final two years of his sentence when they vanish from their cells. Upon his release, Jake discovers that the two guys he had shared everything with had stolen all of his belongings, including money. Feeling discouraged, he turns to the formula in an attempt to win at several casinos. Jake got a reputation that made a lot of casinos afraid of his unusually good luck, and a lot of them have banned him. The formula is applicable to any game, and Jake's seeming chess prowess is a common example of it. Macha, in the meantime, arranges a cocaine transaction with Lily Walker, the counselor to shadowy criminal Lord Sam Gold, who is considered the ultimate figure to whom all other members of the underworld aspire. Walker highlights that Sam Gold hates publicity and cautions Macha not to put off meeting with him. Jake goes along with Avi and Zack as they rob Macha's casino of a vault containing cocaine. Feeling desperate that he must now repay Gold, Macha dispatches Paul to persuade Lord John, the opposing triad kingpin, to sell him substitute 
cocaine at a greatly exaggerated cost. With a derogatory tone, Lord John refuses to negotiate with his adversary. After robbing John of millions of dollars, Zack, Avi, and Jake frame Macha for the heist. Enraged, Lord John dispatches a hitwoman posing as a waiter to murder Macho in his eatery. Sorter just injures the assassin after shooting her. Then, when he tries to escape in a car, he goes outside and murders her getaway driver. Macha battles the hitwoman inside, and she shoots off his finger in the process. Macho shoots the assassin with his bodyguard's weapon out of fury. Macha orders Sorter to kill Lord John as payback, after which he sent Paul and his goons to question the members of John's triad in an effort to track down the stolen cocaine. Even when Paul tortures them to death, the Chinese gangsters accuse Jake of being involved despite their denials. Jake's whole donation to Zack and Avi is made in honor of Macha to a children's charity. Macho accepts the credit, thinking it will help his standing. Walker, however, visits him later and says that Gold is upset with Macha's increased notoriety and his persistent delays in closing the sale. Macha begs Walker to give them more time to finish the deal, but Walker just walks off, threatening something vague. Jake receives a call from Avi three days after learning of his fatal diagnosis, informing him that he is free from his illness. When Jake sees his doctor again, he learns that the initial diagnosis was wrong. Although Jake has a rare blood disorder, it is treatable rather than fatal. The physician expresses sincere regret for the error. Meanwhile, Macho intensifies the contract against him because he now thinks Jake is the one who is plotting against him. He is pursued by his goons to a home where Zack and Avi live, but he escapes them. One of the hitmen is killed when he falls on his shotgun during the chase. The gangsters take this accident the wrong way and think Jake killed him. On a rooftop, Jake runs across Avi and Zack, who turn out to have been his neighbors throughout his years in prison. They disclose that Sam Gold is essentially a helpless cipher bestowed with power solely by those who finance him. He is the embodiment of greed and stands for ego. Avi makes an effort to help Jake confront his own ingrained belief in the ego and comprehend its nature. The men tell Jake that they have liberated him from Gold's game by taking away the material manifestation of his ego, which is his money. In another scene, Billy, Jake's brother, is deceived by his bodyguard into allowing Sorter and Paul into his house in order to pay off a debt with Macha. To find out where Jake is, Paul torments Billy threatens to take Billy's daughter, and sets him on fire. Sorter is unsettled by the violent acts which help him discover his conscience. In an attempt to save the girl, he kills Paul and all of his allies against his better judgment in order to satisfy his ego. That evening, Jake, armed, breaks into Macha's sleeping quarters in the penthouse. Unexpectedly, he kneels in front of the bed and begs the Macha, who is partially nude, for forgiveness. Jake gets out of the elevator as it stalls on the 13th floor. Macha reaches for his own pistol and dashes to the bottom floor to confront Jake. Jake conducts a mental dialogue with himself while he waits in the elevator, during which he rejects his ego. By taking deliberate action to go against everything his ego commands him to do, Jake effectively moves off the figurative chessboard. This is thought to be the most basic and accurate use of the formula. Macha keeps Jake at gunpoint as the doors open on him and he prepares to exit the building, but a composed Jake shows no fear of him. He abandons Macho in the entryway of his penthouse, a sobbing, pitiful wreck. Jake has rejected the ego, but Macha has been seen to be devoured by it, which has embarrassed him. 